So EA FC 25 is just over a month away. Remember guys, you can play this game on the 20th of September with early access. And beta codes also dropped this week. Your boy still hasn't got one yet. Maybe next year, right EA? Before we get into today's video boys, I want to let you know of a giveaway opportunity man. Obviously we're talking EA FC 25 in today's video. I am doing an official channel giveaway, EA FC 25 giveaway here on the channel man. So two things you boys gotta do to get involved with the giveaway. And as I say, I'm gonna run the giveaway winner and announce it on one of next week's streams. So keep your eyes peeled on the channel for the next upcoming streams as well. But the two things you gotta do to enter the giveaway, boys. Firstly, you have to comment your favorite thing about the channel in the last year. So, as I say, it could be a specific stream, it could be a specific moment from a stream, a pack. Yeah, it can literally be anything, boys. As I say, get in the comments, let me know your favorite thing about the channel. Uh, or favorite type of content that's been on the channel uh, that you've seen in the last year in EAFC24. And the second thing is one thing, and we're obviously going to discuss a lot about it today, is one thing you're most excited for for the new game. Now, if you're a little bit like your boy Footy over here, you're probably quite skeptical on a lot of things. Obviously, with EA's track record, it isn't exactly good, is it? So, yeah, I'm skeptical on pretty much every new addition to the game. But, as I say, drop in the, in the comments, boys, the second thing, second part of your answer, to enter the giveaway, one thing that you kind of are optimistic about. For me, it is definitely 5v5 rush. But yeah, let me know in the comments, boys, what mode or what new feature, new addition to EAFC 25 you're most looking forward to, you're most optimistic about for next year's game. All right, boys, so let's start off by talking about 5v5 rush, man. I mean, this mode, I am super, super excited about, man. I mean, the fact that they're incorporating this within Ultimate Team, uh, they're doing other modes as well. I think it's in career mode, it's in pro clubs as well, but the fact they're incorporating this in Ultimate Team has me very, very excited, man. And as I say, you know your boy Fuddy. I don't like to get ahead of myself on things, especially with EA, man. You can never trust this company. We know that, man. But w what they're saying with this mode, it's definitely got potential. And before I even, we're going to look into a wee bit of footage. I'm not play the whole trailer because you know you boys haven't came here for a trailer reaction or anything like that there but as I say I'll look through it and we'll discuss a little bit about it but yeah I'll, I'll go through the, the brief of the trailer and you know share my thoughts with, with you boys on this and then after that we'll cover the rest of the Ultimate Team content that we know about as well for 25. For this boys I think they've tried bite size FIFA before you know I want to stress that before, before we even get into this I mean before we even talk about 5v5 rush like they've tried moments last year I mean it was an absolute flop man. When was the last time you boys played moments man let me know in the comments on that one. I bet it was a very very long Long time ago, if you, if you ever even played it, it was such a dead mode. But the, the theory behind it, bite sides FIFA, you know, you can move from work or school, you can, you can only get on the game for maybe 15 20 minutes. You don't want to go into the you know the depths of division rivals or champs, you just want to play something for a bit of fun, quick and easy 20 minutes. You're on, you're off, right? Bite sides FIFA, quick FIFA, it works, but you need to have something that obviously is enjoyable and is actually worth worthy of you know, even, even the 15 20 minutes you're gonna play it, right? So, moments failed, but. 5v5 rush, man. Will it just be, you know, uh, uh, an even worse version of Volta? You know, let's see. I mean, I, I, I never played Volta, boys. I, anything, anything I know about Volta, I watched on YouTube. I never set foot in that mode, man. The fact they're putting in this Nautma team and they're, and they're actually getting rewards from it. Because let's be honest, the moments rewards were, let's be real. You, you, you went and done a, a bit of grinding of moments and then you can end up, the store packs were never that good. You know, you maybe spent 60 tokens on a 7.5k pack. Maybe a 15k pack if you're lucky. Like, it was not great, was it? So, the fact that they're... Obviously, there's rewards through this, through this 5v5 rush. I'll actually let this play, and then, because what I'm going to talk about in a second, boys, kind of is through this trailer, as I say. So let me just let it play for a little second. Yeah, so that what, what they're saying here, boys, you're going to, as I said, it's 5v5, obviously. We know that, 5v5 rush. But the big thing with this is, you play, I think it's going to feel more incorporative and more interactive, because, you know, I'm thinking of a content thing as well. Like, this would be a great thing to do with, with viewers. You know, it's kind of like a mini pro clubs within Ultimate Team, because, and obviously, as I said earlier, rush is in pro clubs, but um, within the Ultimate Team side of things, like, you're playing as one player out of your main 11, you know, player Ultimate Team, and, let you know, one of your main players in your main squad, your friend's doing the same, your other friend's doing the same, your other friend's doing the same, and you're controlling that one player. You all earn XP or bonuses and packs and coins from, from the games. Now, obviously, this is reward dependent as well. You know, the first thing I'll say is I like the idea of the mode and I like the, where, where they're going with it. And, you know, the most the fundamental thing is it has to be fun, right? And I think, hopefully, from what I'm seeing early on, it looks like it will be. You know, I like the idea of being able to control one player and it's 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 more relatable to you because it's your actual player that you're used to controlling in your main, you know, foot team. Rewards, obviously, you know, because obviously we, we want to be rewarded for it and for the grind so um you know the rewards we don't really know much about that right now so let's let's just see what ea do on that thing man and the, the rewards need to be a lot better than what they are for moments because this might be this mode could take off man this mode
world could be very, very competitive. Maybe EA's idea of bite-sized FIFA and, you know, less stressful than foot champs and rivals, but if the rewards were good in this, I can see more people playing this, because obviously it might be more fun than playing, uh, you know, rivals during the week, for example. Now, obviously the hardcores, like myself, for content, well, I'll probably all do all three, but you know what I'm trying to say? Like, you might, if, you're, if you've only got time to play one or two modes a week rather than maybe three or four, you might prioritize Rush if the rewards were, you know, benefiting you to, I guess, do that. So, yeah, let's let it play a wee second. Yeah, they rush to the middle of the pitch, man. That's quite interesting, that, actually. Okay, bit of a sprint race. I mean, you're gonna, everyone's gonna be, that's like a new meta now, isn't it? I've already discovered the meta, boys. Who's, who's quicker to kick off? There are no red cards in Rush. Okay. That's gonna be weird though, isn't it? No red cards in rush. You're just gonna like if you're if you're going if he's going through and goal, no questions, boys, you take him out, man. There's gonna be a blue card. Blue card resulting in a temporary suspension. Okay, so it's still gets suspended, but yeah. It's not as bad though. Yeah. So we don't need to listen to all this. Obviously you boys already know uh the feature with this, but I just wanna let that first bit play, man. But quicker matches. Um obviously the blue card is interesting. And then obviously I think I can go through here. Yeah, so this is the thing here as well, where you play as like one player from your team. So say goal poacher, say that's me. Uh not that I am a goal poacher, by the way. Football's fun, A V Joe, soccer is cool. Say that's three of you boys, right? Three viewers. You pick your player from your main team, you load up, and this could be really OP. Okay. I mean, say you've all, you've all, we've all got those friends, boys, with excellent, excellent pack luck. Hit them up, man, for some rush. This is the, this is the way to go. I mean, you, you can, you can really grind with, with your mates on these, on these modes if they have excellent players as well, you know. So yeah, as I say, I like the idea of that definitely do. Uh, obviously, rushes in clubs it says that, and obviously it's in manager career as well. So yeah, I, I, I listen. I'm not gonna get too ahead of myself, boys. But so far, from what I'm hearing on that, looks a positive. Will I be saying that in two months? Let's wait and see. Right, boys, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, FC IQ, man. I mean, this is the kind of new, like, tactical overhaul on EA FC 25, man. And uh, as I say, obviously, we've seen that from the deep dive trailer of Ultimate Team now, yet again, like like I did with the Rush trailer, I'm not gonna, you know, literally replay it for you boys, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it does intrigue me a lot, man, because if we go to where they show the settings here, yeah, so if we just pause that, right, tactical strengths, players rarely tire, win the ball back quickly, threatening out wide, now, uh, I'll let this play a little bit until, like, the next, maybe, 20 seconds in a second, boys, but I just wanna make this point first, what they then go on to say in a second, you'll hear it in the clip, as, yeah, listen, all you boys have seen the trailer, I'm sure, right, but I really wanna focus on the fact that, I'm sure we've all played these games, right, where the, I always say, and a lot of you boys are regulars, you know, watching this video, a lot of you boys are regulars on the on the channel, regularly watch the streams, etc, and you'll know I've said this, you know, millions of times this year, man, on the streams, where I always say, with the int AI intelligence, is, is a massive thing for me in FIFA, and I, I don't hear people speak about it enough, I really, really don't, man, I think, you gotta have that balance where, you know, you wanna, you wanna, it has to be manual, right, there has to be a skill gap remained between the divisions, between the foot champs ranks, so, you know, don't get me wrong, you can't have insane attacking intelligence. It's just going to help you out and hand everything to you on a plate. I'm not saying that one bit. But sometimes, like, you're getting to the byline. In world football, right, if, if a player gets to the byline and it's a real top, top world-class striker that is good movement, and he's going to maybe move, make one one run, make another run, you know, jinx the defender a little bit, move him about a little bit and make him think, you know, make him look over his shoulder, make him look to the side. The defender doesn't know where he is. The, the likes of Haaland. Many, many goals does Haaland get for City, man? When they score that City-type goal, where they get to the byline or they work a chance down the line, Cut it back, the players there. I find in FIFA when you do something like that. Now I'm not saying you can't score cutbacks. I mean cutback was, was a lot of them are quite meta this year, especially the early part of the FIFA cycle this year. But I sometimes find when I'm going down the line, you know, and that's where the player lock thing comes in. But I, and I know that is something that you need to learn, and I need to learn that and improve with that as well. But sometimes I think it's like a set. It's, it should just be second nature of players, especially if you've got the higher level players. You know, likes that like the, like the Haaland, You know, say he's your number nine on your team. He, they just stand there stationary, and I'm trying to cut the ball back. The defender easily clears it because defender is there, but the attacker just doesn't make a run for you. He, he doesn't make a... It's not even a run. It's just like a little bit of a movement. It's not even a run. Yeah, because if I want to trigger a run, obviously you do that manually through the uh, L1 button or whatever button it is on Xbox. But yeah, I just find the, the attacking intelligence, sometimes the players are moving towards the opposition defenders rather than away from them. A little bit of, you know, attacking intelligence there would be brilliant. The same thing with defensive AI as well. I mean, yet again, player switching is hugely important. You know, you need to be able to do that. Yet again, creating that skill gap and the same thing with obviously you know reading the game all that type of thing man player switching reading of the game you know all that kind of thing comes into the skill gap and, and how you better yourself as a player totally get that do not want that to change only thing i would say is we all know those times when you score the tip or when you're trying to defend against the typical kind of attacks where you know balls played out to the edge of your box your opponents looking those like quick passes to get into the striker you know around the penalty spot and they maybe cut in or do a skill move and shoot right sometimes like your defender that you're maybe not necessarily
necessarily controlling is right next to the attacking player. And if this was in real life, the player would put a foot in and comfortably win the ball. You know, or maybe it might be, you know, they're running down the line. Um, or not running down the line, but maybe they're running down the, the one of the channels. Or down one of the sides of your box even, right? And you've got, it's nearly like a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with one of your defenders. But you're not controlling that defender. You know, maybe he's, maybe I'm controlling the central defender. My left centre-back, for example. But this, this player is running down the right channel. And my right centre-back I haven't selected. Now, yes, I should be selecting my right centre-back. But sometimes you, little, you want a little bit more intelligence. Not to do it for me, but just for the right centre-back in this instance, for example. Just to kind of... I don't want him to tackle, because at the end of the day, I have to switch to him and put the tackle in myself. But to be moving a little bit more with the, the attacking player. I hope that makes sense. It isn't the easiest thing to explain. I don't know whether I'm doing a good, good or bad job explaining it, boys. But hopefully some of you boys understand what I'm saying. Just atta attacking and defensive AI intelligence is something that, that I've spoke about in streams before. And I think this type of FCIQ, I'm hoping that it makes it a little bit better. You look at these things like you hear with Ange Postacoglu, set the counters in isolated front line, inconsistent build up. Making the team play a little bit more like the manager you're selecting. So Matt, there's a lot more focus on these managers this year as well from what we're seeing here. So yeah, um, I just hope it seems like that. Because it, it just seems sometimes like, right, you control one player, you control two players if you're second man pressing. Um, if you're not doing that, then pretty much you've nine just stationary players. You know, they aren't really moving that much at times and they're just oblivious to what's going on around the pitch until you switch to them. That's pretty much the best way I can explain it, actually. I probably should have said that at the start, Jackie Pratt, but yeah. But yeah, hopefully you boys get what I'm saying. As I say, that last line that I said there, yeah, that pretty much explains it the best, man, but yeah. Hopefully AFCIQ will bring a little bit more of that into the game. Okay, so we've got like half, half winger, winger, wide playmaker, so it's nearly roles within roles, isn't it? It's a lot more in-depth to what you're doing. It's not just, you know, you're, you're a right winger, but you're tracking back, come back on defence, or, you know, you're a fullback and you're getting forward, or you're overlapping, or you're underlapping, or you're staying back while attacking, you know, the traditional ones we have. These are roles where it's nearly like, you know, it's just, it's, it's, just, it's just literally like, it might not make much of a difference, let's be real, but as you can see here, boys, it says A plus or A plus plus, a bit like the way we had the playstyles this year with the, you know, different, like the playstyles and then the playstyle pluses with the different boosts that they had. But yeah, it's just kind of a more in-depth kind of positional system, I guess you could say, where players ha are not just, they're not just defined as this. They're maybe, you know, it's not just defined as a right back that goes forward. You know, it's not, it's not as basic as that you know it's more in depth so let's see how they do with that different positions yeah let's see what way it works out obviously evos we all know about evos man i mean i you boys regularly watch the streams you will know i do not i have not should i say done a lot of evos this year however seems to be a lot more focus on evos in the new year man and in, in the fc25 from what we're what the news is saying and what this trailer was saying so expanded evos the big thing for me yeah they're saying boys as you can see here Less restrictive. The big thing as well is less restrictive. That's kind of the words, in EA's own words, less restrictive. So the idea is that, you know, and that, that, that's a big thing. The idea is obviously you can use more of your players that you're, your, your fear players in, in world football. If you get your hands on like a Bellingham or, you know, a uh, Haaland or Bruno Fernandes, whoever, whoever it could be. Maybe there'll be more of an opportunity to evil these players earlier in the year as well, man. Get them in your team and keep them in your team. Which hopefully, in theory, that would seem to me, if that is the case, you know, stick by their word and make these evils this year less restrictive. It should add a little bit more variety in teams, hopefully, man. You know, we all know the meta teams, but, you know, it might be... And obviously, it's the gameplay dependent as well. But, if you know, we all, we're all we all sick of seeing the same teams over and over again, aren't we? But I don't blame anyone for using them, because that's the meta, and that's what, what wins games, right? But but if these Evos and expanded Evos, you know, if they're less restrictive, it might add, you know, more variety and more, more of a unique style, I guess, to people's teams this year because they're able to use players. If, say, they pack one of their fear players in world football, maybe it's from the team they support, they're going to be more likely to go and evil him and uh, keep him in their team, potentially, if he's good in game as well, man. So, yeah. But I hope this is the case, man, because that's a good thing. I would certainly do more evils. i only done, like, maybe five, six evils this whole FIFA, which you boys are probably looking at me going, what, Jack? That is, like, literally nothing. I know. But I just haven't got into it, man. I mean, I, I don't know where it's because I've had a really good year of pack luck this year from all, like, my save packs and stuff. You boys know, man, I don't even put any money on the game. So it's like, for me to get good pack luck this year. I feel like my 25 EAFC 25 pack is going to be really bad. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know why my pack luck was good this year, so I just didn't feel the need to do as many Evos. I don't know, but I just haven't got around to it. Haven't done them. I, I definitely feel like, oh, if this is what they're saying here, potentially it would make me do more next year. Green. 
This year, you can add yeah, they can change the card. Not really caring about that. I mean, you know, it's nice, but I don't really care about that. And then, obviously, I'm only a few more minor things here, boys. But uh, obviously, du uh, duplicate storage system. I, I mentioned this in, in the video about a month ago when we talked about AFC equals greed, greed, greed. A lot of you boys enjoyed that one. Yeah, I mean, finally, at least, at least they, they they say there in the trailer, oh, they've listened to us. Yeah, it only took us five years. Yeah, it's more of well, we did hear you four years ago, but they couldn't be bothered to do it then. So now they they can be bothered at a two T A to do it now. So let's just put it off as if we're listening to the community. You're not feeling us, eh? You're not feeling us. But listen, better late than never. We take it. It's it's much needed in this game. And finally, we're getting it, man. Duplicate storage system in FC25. And of course, boys, you know, we've got to talk about rewards, man. Last, but definitely not least in today's video, rewards. Um, Obviously, I'm sure a lot of you boys have heard, relegation is back. So from what I know, right, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on this, but from what I know, boys, what I've heard from sources and Twitter and stuff, apparently, whatever division you end on, uh, or sorry, whatever division, whatever your best division was in the AFC 24, that's the one you're going to start with in 25. Now, that sounds insane, because say you're an elite division player, you're going to start an elite division in F25, if this is true. But, of course, remember, and what I'm seeing in this trailer, it's not that great, because um, it's going to be ridiculously tough in elite division in 25. Of course it will be, especially in the early weeks. Relegation's back, and it's even easier to get relegated than before, because there's less, like, check marks in between each division, if you know what I mean, like, checkpoints. So, you know, you're, you're basically, you need, you need fewer losses now. From, from what we're seeing here in the trailer to get relegated so it's gonna be even easier man to, to pretty much get relegated <laughs> from from divisions even if you draw you'll still progress so that's good that's good with the draw thing by the way I didn't even speak about that there but that is good at least you get something for a draw rather than you know we all know those games boys where you just feel like you waste 20 minutes of your life boys playing against some prats right that you know and maybe you get unlucky and you draw the game you get no progress for it and it's pretty much just 20 minutes wasted man you've done you've accomplished nothing so good that at least you're getting a point for the for the draws now as well yeah matchmaking's gonna be interesting because as I say especially in the early weeks man I cannot wait to see what way this works out with the way as I said there with people's division starting in the, their best division in 24 you know my best division and 24 is Division 1. So, I'm, I'm in trouble, boys, aren't I? I'm in trouble, man. But then, the way I, the way you got to look at it is also, for, for, like, for I'll give my example. I'm div, Say I'm Div 1. Like, I'm going to be facing as Div 1 players that they're best, people that were best, that their best division was Div 1 and 24. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be great 25, you know, or or any better than me. So, I, 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 I can I can give it a good go, hopefully, man. Div 1 sounds scary in the first week of the game when, you know, you're only really assembling your team for the first Champs Weekend League. But a lot of people are going to be in the same boat, aren't they? Big thanks for watching, boys. Really, really appreciate the support on the channel. Uh, as I say, EFC 25, man, not long to go now. Just over a month uh, when you boys see this video. And um, as I say, get subscribed for all the EFC 25 content, man. I probably will have another couple of videos up regarding the game and news that comes out and stuff before, you know, we get into obviously the daily content on the streams and stuff again with, with the EFC 25 once the game's out. But get subscribed. We're on that road to 7,000. I can't thank you boys enough for your support. You're all amazing. And um, yeah, as I say, get subscribed if you're new to the channel. I'm Jack Footy, streamer, content a creator here on YouTube. It'd be great to have some of you boys join us. Welcome aboard if you are new to the streams, new to the channel. Um, get yourself part of the community, man, for the new EAFC 25 in one month's time. And um, yeah, hope you boys have enjoyed. Remember as well the giveaway. As I say, get in the comments. Let me know. Favorite thing about the channel this year? It could be a specific moment, like a stream, moment in the stream, funny moment, brilliant pack, whatever it would be. And, I'll, and then, as I say also, let me know. Second thing is, boys, which mode or feature, new addition to 25, are you most looking forward to in the new game? Appreciate you boys watching. Your comments then, I'll be reading all those. And uh, as I say, the best comments will go into a wheel that'll be spun next week on stream to reveal who's winning a copy of EAFC 25. And uh, yeah, big thanks for watching, boys. I'll see you on the next one, man. Peace out.